Our scripture reading this morning is Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. If you'd hear now the word of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So did you get what you wanted for Christmas? Some of you probably have opened gifts already. Some of you will be doing that after service this morning. I hope you get what you want. I remember as a child, I always look forward to Christmas and in our house, one of the things we would do is we would make a little chain of red and green construction paper, little loops. You know, you put those loops together and it would hang from the door. And each day you'd tear off a loop as you went to school as we counted down the days to Christmas. And I, I remember uh, thinking about that with anticipation. And I was always the first one up on Christmas morning. I was the annoying child. I know it might surprise you, but that was one of my role I played in my house. I was the annoying one up first. And most Christmas mornings, I got what I wanted for Christmas, except one year, a year that will live in infamy. I really wanted the $6 million man action figure, along with the bionic transport and repair station. And that Christmas morning, I ran downstairs, I opened my gifts, I found my Steve Austin, I found my action figure, but not the bionic transport and repair station. My parents really tried to find it for me, but it was sold out that year, it was so popular, after all that waiting, I didn't get what I wanted for Christmas. Has it ever happened in your life when you were growing up, something you wanted you didn't get, or Maybe it's going on right now in your life. Something you wanted, something you've been waiting for, and it hasn't come. This Christmas morning in, in my message to you, I want to tell you about a man who waited a long time. He waited a long time for something he desperately wanted. He waited his whole life for it. And one day... It finally came. And this man was Simeon. And I want to tell you a little bit about Simeon this morning. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Simeon because we really don't know a lot about Simeon. We only know a little bit about him. People make a lot of assumptions about Simeon. They assume he was old. He may well have been. It's perhaps likely, but we're not told that in the Scriptures we assume he was a priest. We're not told that either. There may be good reasons to speculate it, but we're not told that. Luke doesn't tell us very much about him. He tells us a little about Simeon. But he does give us a couple of nuggets of information about Simeon. He tells us about Simeon's character. That this was a devout person. In verse 25, we read about him being righteous and devout. That the Holy Spirit rested on him. He was a believer. He loved and served the Lord. And we're also told about him that he was waiting for something. He was waiting for something. It says, verse 25, he was looking forward 
to the consolation of Israel. Just like you look forward to Christmas Day, he was looking forward to the consolation of Israel. He expected that something big was coming. We could say that he wanted something for Christmas. Simeon was waiting for something, longing for something. And the text gives us the impression that it was a long time. We're not certain how long, but it's clear in the text that there's a sense that he was waiting for a long time, year after year. What was he waiting for? He was waiting for the deliverance of Israel. He was waiting for God to intervene in history and change things. And the way Simeon expected that to happen was through the coming of the Lord's Messiah. He was looking for, desiring, wanting the Lord's Messiah. And he believed that he would see this, see this before his death. And the reason he believed that it it was that God had promised him it would be so. Verse 26. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And so Simeon waited for it. He looked forward to it like a child waiting for Christmas morning. And then one day the Spirit told him to go to the temple, and Simeon did. And there on that day, Simeon saw the Lord's Messiah. He saw Jesus. Think about that moment. After waiting and waiting and waiting, he comes and he sees what he has been waiting for. And this weary man, weary with years of waiting, this weary man who represents a weary Israel, an Israel in darkness, an Israel under occupation, Oh, Israel fatigued under the boot of Rome. This weary man who is like Adam in a sense, who represents a weary world, waiting and longing. And then he comes and he sees the Lord's Messiah. He saw Jesus. And he opens in a burst of praise. He rejoices. This weary man rejoices. Verse 29, Master, as the NIV has it, Sovereign Lord, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Simeon had been waiting for that revelation of the Lord's Messiah, waiting for Jesus, and one day he got what he wanted. And the fact that he received what he wanted is evidenced by the fact that he says, you can dismiss me now. And some people think that was his dismissal from the priesthood. Others think it was his dismissal from life. He's like, I am ready to die. Because you have given me the one thing I wanted. You've given me Jesus. Simeon got what he wanted for Christmas. And he responded by singing a Christmas carol. Right? He he burst forth in song. It's this text is called Simeon's Song or Simeon's canticle or the nunc dimittis in in Latin. It's Simeon saying a Christmas song, a Christmas carol, if you will. He was so filled with joy. He sang a Christmas song. I have uh, mixed feelings when it comes to Christmas music. Some of it I like. Some of it I absolutely detest. Among my least favorite songs are Last Christmas by Wham. That's excruciating. Not a big fan of Feliz Navidad by Jose Feliciano. That gets on my nerves a little bit. I don't like Paul McCartney's Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time. 
how that guy wrote Let It Be and that song, I do not know. And this one's going to be unpopular because this is perhaps the most popular Christmas song of all time. It's Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. I like Mariah Carey. She's actually a believer, and uh, I hate to, I just don't like that song. Maybe it's because it gets played too much. It kind of drives me crazy. But as I was writing this sermon, as I was thinking about Simeon, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You, that song was like an earworm, right? It was, it was going through my head at this time. All I want for Christmas is you. You know it, right? I sang again. That'll go viral on YouTube, I'm sure. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is you. Now, why was that song going through my head? Because it reminded me of Simeon. Here is this guy. He wanted just one thing, right? And when he gets it, he bursts forth in praise. It's as if you know, he sings that song about Jesus. All I want for Christmas is you. When he was holding the Christ, he burst forth in song. He had seen the consolation of Israel. He had seen the Lord's Messiah. He had seen Jesus. And he bursts forth in song. You know, he drops the mic. He walks off stage. Why? Because it was enough. It's all he wanted. All he wanted for Christmas was Jesus. It was good enough. And this is where I think this story challenges us this Christmas morning. Think about it. Simeon was a guy who went to church. Right? The temple. God's house. He went to church. I'm assuming by what we know about him that he was righteous and devout, that he went often and regularly. And he was going to church for one reason, to see one thing, with one hope, to see the Lord's Messiah, to see Jesus. And I think that should challenge all of us to ask ourselves, what do we want to see when we go to church? What do we want from God? And I think that question is vitally important to ask ourselves because what you seek, you will find. And what you don't seek, you won't find. What do you want for Christmas? What do you want to see when you go to church? There's this interesting thing about Simeon. I've already mentioned that he is a type of Israel itself. He is paradigmatic of Israel. He is what Israel was supposed to embody and be. Israel was supposed to be righteous and devout. And they were supposed to wait longingly for God's promise, the Lord's Messiah. And so he represents the paradigm of what Israel should be. But he's also a foil for Israel. Because we know from the story, we know from the unfolding of the New Testament, we know from what he says to Mary when he says to her that he'll be for the falling and rising of many in Israel and a sign to be opposed. We know that not everyone will see him or want to see him. Many in Israel missed him. They failed to see the Lord's Christ, the Lord's Messiah. And why was that so? Because they didn't know what to look for? No, God told them over and over again. The gospel narratives are filled with Old Testament prophetic fulfillments. God said, you know what to look for. But they still didn't see. Why? Because they wanted something else they wanted their own image of what the Messiah should be. They wanted one who would come to fulfill their nationalistic, their political desires. They wanted a military leader, not a baby in a manger, not a sacrificial lamb on a cross. They wanted a different Messiah, and they missed him. They failed to see the Lord's Messiah. 
think that's how Simeon challenges us this Christmas morning. He challenges us to have that solitary focus, that one desire, that all we want for Christmas is Jesus. That that's why we come to church. For the Lord's Messiah. I'm beginning my fifth year here now as your pastor. And I must confess at times, right now, even this morning, I feel a bit weary. And most of what, what wearies me, and it's not so much about our congregation, although we're not free from these issues, I get weary about the church, about what I see in the church, about why people are interested in coming to church. Some Christians come to church for the show, for the theater seats, the performance, and the fog machine. Some Christians come to church for the services offered, the barista and the coffee bar, the staff that will meet every need, every ministry you could imagine. No need to volunteer, you just drive up and you get your Christian service. And some come to church criticize. They come to church to find fault. They're not looking for Jesus. They're looking for what's wrong. And some Christians come to church for politics. They want the church to be just another echo chamber reinforcing their already tightly held presuppositions, and it happens on both ends of the political spectrum. It seems like Christians go to church for a variety of reasons, but perhaps not the one that Simeon had. In these years, I read a lot about pastors, the emails that pastors have been getting, particularly over the last two years. Do this, pastor. Don't do that. You're not going far enough. You're going too far. You're not political enough. You're too political. And then I think about the email that Simeon would have sent to his pastor. What would that have looked like? Pastor, I want more Jesus. I want to come to church and see Jesus. Give me Jesus. I don't want to hear about the politics of Israel. I want to hear about Jesus. That's all I want. Some songs some bread and wine, and the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's all Simeon wanted for Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? I hope it's Jesus. I really do, and I believe it is, because I really hope it's Jesus, because that's the only gift I have to give to you. I can't fix your marriage. I can't make your 401k go up. I can't heal you. I can't make you handsome or pretty. All I have to offer you is Jesus. Jesus Christ and him crucified. And as Porky Pig said, that's all, folks. That's all I have to give. That's all I got. And that should be enough. Right? It should be enough. It was enough for Simeon. It's all he wanted. So, beloved, this Christmas, I hope you have come here today for the one gift I can give you, the gift of the Lord's Messiah. I give you Jesus. And I hope that all you wanted for Christmas was him.